All right? First of all, who you knows uh, the website State of the Devs? Uh, 75, 76%, okay, that's very good. So uh, what we try to do already since uh, a couple of years, 2015, is we try to collect all the devs that you are building and to show them to, uh, to users that are interested in this, but also people that want to attract uh, other developers or investors and just want to do competitive research for all kinds of purposes to, to collect this kind of thing. Um, and we collect a lot of data. So some of the data is on-chain, so we see how many people are using your devs, what kind of traffic they get, uh, but also how much development activity is there? Are they very active or did this dev uh, die out? Uh, what kind of category are there? So really categorizing all these, uh, these angles out, uh, out there. Um, and also we track how many devs were submitted. And interest, very interestingly, and that kind of resonates with the research that you did before, there was a lot of dev development activity like last year. And December was like the all-time high with uh, almost 180 new devs being uh, submitted to our website. And maybe there are more devs, but I think this is a good indication of the amount of development activity that's there. And now for the last couple months, probably people are still uh, recovering from Christmas or it's uh, some other kind of factor, but it's been uh, more, more stable nowadays. Um, and we provide very special service, so if your debt is not listed here or if the listing is not up to date, you can reach out to me or reach out to the website, get it updated, just like what we did with the, the Maker team. Their figures were not correct, we fixed it, and just uh, five minutes ago, everything was up to, up to date again. Um, what I want to do in, in this talk, um, I want to dive into a couple devs, for example. We have to track the time a little bit, so I have prepared four devs, and maybe we can do two or three, uh, depending on how quick I talk. Um, but I want to see, like, for example, for this dev called My Crypto Heroes, how do they onboard new users? Because onboarding of users is very difficult, so what kind of best practices can we see? But also, what kind of things do they do wrong, or what can be improved? And these four devs are just examples out there. I'm just cherry picking a couple, and it's not to potentially attack them themselves. Hopefully, they can learn from this, or you can learn from, from the others and, and use this to your advantage. Um, and just a definition, user onboarding is the process of increasing the likelihood that new users will become successful when adopting your product. And in this case, your product is your dApp. So we want to try to get new users to be as successful as possible with your dApp the first time that they try it out. Um, so first is My Crypto Heroes. It's uh, like the top Ethereum game uh, out there. I, I've never played it myself. We here knows the game, My Crypto Heroes. Okay, one, one game player in the, in the back of the, the, back of the room. Uh, so yeah, let's just look into it. Um, it has some interesting pixel art, which might uh, compel you or not. You, you, you kind of see what's, what's happening here with these, these heroes. Uh, they call themselves Hero Worker Placement RPG. I mean, that's kind of technical. If you want to sell the proposition of your dev, maybe you need to tune down the messaging a little bit and make it a bit more user-friendly. This is really more than geeks to call yourself uh, such a thing. So let's, let's play this dev. Let's, let's visit the website or, or play, this, uh, play this game. So we come to their, to their website. Pretty clear. Very clear layout. You can see what's, what's happening out there. Again, the arts. Single call to action. So what's the most important thing you can do? Play this game. I mean, that's no confusion there. Uh, rather ambitious, right? So you, your time and your passion will become assets. Uh, does that mean? Can they make that true? Uh, so even a beginner's guide from our competitor, Dev.com, so that's a really reputable source that, that can walk you through the game. If you need any support, it's clear where you can get it on the Discord channel. And if you want to have more info before you start playing, you can just scroll down and get a feeling what this step is all about. There's not a lot of content here besides these images, but you, you get a feeling what you can expect with heroes, quests, battle, uh, customize your art, uh, etc. Create a team, so pretty pretty clear overall what, uh, what you can do there. If you scroll further down, of course you need MetaMask. Pretty much everybody has the issue with, with getting MetaMask installed, explaining how you need it, how you get it, uh, um, how you get it uh, installed for users, how you get it funded. Um, at that point, it's less clear, right? So the copy, it contains a copy, couple typos, they introduce all kinds of acronyms that are not very clear, so it you know, not, doesn't work anymore. Then there's these things like partners, and, why do you need partners for your gaming site? I don't know this, so I'm not so convinced with that part. So, let's go back, let's play this game. I don't have MetaMask installed yet. I'm a first time user, I just go to this website, I want to play this app. This um, I cannot sign in at the moment, it's grayed out, but I can do a trial play 
using Google Authentication. I'm not sure if it's better to do Google Authentication than just installing MetaMask. It's also horrible, but uh, you, at least you can provide some kind of alternative for your users to try out and get a bit of feeling over their game. And they say, well, if you want to install MetaMask or something like that, look for FAQ. So why don't you link to your FAQ? I mean, if you install them, just make it a link and just H, uh, a ref. It should be very simple. So very obvious things that can be improved to make the flow of your user uh, much more uh, easy. So, Again, we go to MetaMask, we install the <coughs> extension, pretty good, we need to fund it, etc. So three years later, you have your account funded. <laughs> now we're back on the website with MetaMask installed. So the first time now that we see the website with MetaMask, the half of the website has disappeared. You only see the, 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 the images here, but not the title anymore. Well, you can still get support, but uh, it's, it's very limited. So why do I need to log in the first time? I just want to get a feeling for this, for this application. So instead, Give people a preview of what they can expect before you're forcing this kind of MetaMask sign uh, wall at the, at the moment. And then I enter my password, and it wants to get access to my accounts. Um, they say, well, now they introduce themselves as a crypto game from Japan. I, I don't know, does that make you more trustworthy to tell that to us at the moment? <laughs> Maybe Japanese devs are more trustworthy than French ones? Uh, probably not, but uh, I, I don't know. So again, I only want to do this if I trust this site and want to have them view my current accounts, but I don't need them to view my current account just to, to play a game. So ask for the right permissions at the right time, not too much from just delay that when you really need it. So I did that, and now it's just the same website, so you didn't need all this information. You could just show this website at that problem. So the, the, this entire wall was, was a pointless effort. Um, okay, we'll try again. So now I'm going to sign in, um, asking me if I'm a robot. I mean, and there's a lot of denial of service and text and something like that. Why, why do you need this? I mean, this is, you should pay for your transactions, so there should be no cost to them. I, I think this is useless. So don't do this kind of crap unless you really need it and unless you're an attack or something like that. But I don't see. Just make it, keep it, keep it very simple. Um, okay, I'm human. Um, yeah, at this point, maybe ask for this MetaMask sign in and your pass, your, 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 into your password and give permission. So, but before, just when showing the, the home page, no need for that at all. Now I get this weird pop-up message. If I want to delete my trial play account, I, I don't even have a trial play account. So again, very weird. Uh, like 95% of users are probably lost at this moment. So these kind of hurdles in your, in your onboarding flow, really review them and keep it as simple as, uh, as possible. Uh, so now I need to sign in and, and I need to sign some, some text. I mean, my Japanese is not very good. I, I don't know what I'm signing here at this, at this moment. Uh, the terms of service links, which I cannot click on, so I need to, I mean, you don't read the terms of service anyway, so, okay, but at least make the link, or just don't do this kind of charade. But okay, fine, we'll just continue. Uh, now, now I need to create a, a player account um, for the crypto world. What's crypto world? Is that like an alternative to crypto Twitter? And I'm not showing that. So these, these kind of new concepts that you're introducing, it's already very difficult. So keep, keep, it, keep the language simple and easy and don't add all these kind of complex things. But it's very good. The play name that I choose, I can change it later. I can change my mind. It's not set in stone. It's not probably not even stored on the blockchain at this moment, or I can change it later. So these are good, good parts uh, as well. So pick something there. This is a huge banner, I'm not even sure if this is part of the game or not. So I can click on it, but I don't know what benefits I get <laughs> from, from it. Uh, and, and many things. I mean, you've, you've got people, they've installed MetaMask, they've signed in, you've got all these steps. Now what? Now what do I need to do? Where do I need to click? Like, what's the next step to, to take? Well, click. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. So, again, I scroll down. I see I have zero asset value, I have zero gum. Okay, fine. But try, try to avoid these kind of empty states. When you show people, I'm just like, oh, you have no friends. I mean, that's that's pretty big. <laughs> keep it, keep it friendly and uh, uh, like that. So, and again, in this game, I mean, this is probably their in-game currency. At least add a link to the shop so you can get them or buy friends or whatever kind of thing you're offering. So, so make this flow as, as convenient as, as possible. So, okay, we, we start get questing. They have a very nice tutorial showing us what, what to expect and then we can click through it without even participating in it. I mean, that's, that's nice. Um, it's a bit weird that they have like battery power in an 
elfish fantasy setting, but I, I don't know, I'm not Tolkien, so um, whatever, right? Um, you can collect blocks, cubes, okay, okay, fine, fine. And then there's all these version notes things, I don't know what these are, like maybe worlds or different side chains, I, I don't know what, what, what this kind of thing is, but okay, fine. Like my team, I'm going to depart my team and, and, and complete some quests. I get a bit of an empty bed screen here, so maybe some content is missing in here uh, to explain what's happening and what I can expect. Again, not, not, not very clear what's happening. And of course we win. I, I have no idea why I won. Or <laughs> there was no transaction made. Uh, I'm not sure that's happened, but okay, but I won. I got some loot boxes, I got some monster blocks, etc. Um, okay, that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, maybe I need to buy a hero to, to become better. So we have this, this hero shop. I can buy uh, Pocahontas to, to help me out. I mean, that, that's cool. Now I can finally spend my, my gum. And yeah, it's probably pretty cheap. I mean, yeah, what's the gum exchange rate? Yeah. I, I have no, no clue, but uh, it sounds, sounds fine, right? I can buy Pocahontas or maybe not. No, it's great out. Um, so I guess I need to first buy some gum. And then there's this gun shop where they have these weird conditions and terms which don't make it easier for me as a first time user to pick, right? They just want to buy Pocahontas. They don't want to analyze this Ponzi scheme and to see what's what happening, right? They just want to buy it. <laughs> but I cannot actually buy it. It's, it's grayed out. Because, oh yeah, on the home page was, ah, remember Constantinople, stop some functions of MCH. Yeah, thanks Constantinople, I couldn't even pay anything at all. Um, so yeah, that was one of these teardowns. I can do like one or two more. I just need to take a bit of, a bit of time. Um, I'm collecting these. I want to create more of these kind of book tools on our on the website. Um, so let's take the next one. Are you releasing these teardowns as videos too? Uh, yes. 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 <laughs> so we got sent. <coughs> Is the developer in the room? <laughs> Anybody knows sent? We get one, two, two users, three, four, five, six, okay. Wow. Um, so let's look how Scent does their onboarding. So Scent is a social network for Ethereum. Uh, they claim to be the income generating social network. It's quite a statement. Let, let's see if they can make that uh, true. Uh, pretty good value proposition. So you can just relax and create income from anywhere. I mean, I'm only missing like a Margarita, the beach picture here where you can just uh, sit back and, and earn money while you wait. But uh, it's probably, I mean, they're selling, selling a value. So they're not just selling features, but they sell what you can, how you become a better person by, by doing their platform. So that's Bitcoin a good start. I'm sorry? It's not BitConnect, it's Sand. It's Sand, yes. <laughs> it's shorter even. Um, so now I come to their, to their website. Interesting layout. I mean, some posts probably by people. Um, there's some dollar leaves there. Do, do I need to pay for an article or is this like how much they earned or I don't know what this, this is so I'm a bit confused about it but just let's let's continue. I want to create an account so I click on one of the buttons and I get a traditional login screen. I mean ever seen these in, in the web 3.0 world? No I would expect like this metamask crap but now I have this username password. Oh, that, that's weird. I mean, Surprised, I don't know what to expect from this. Don't even know if this is really a dev or what they're doing on the chain. They're just storing transactions or something like that. Uh, but yeah, I can do that. Username, password. Um, welcome to send. I didn't really know, right? So here, some context missing. Why do I need this name? Who's being shown to? What purpose does it have? Just give it a showcase. I mean, probably it's a bit like Twitter. So I can, I can enter my Twitter handle and just do the same kind of thing and be famous on the same as well. So okay, let's continue. I guess it worked. I got zero feedback. My account was created. I mean, no welcome, no, no kind of thing. Just back on the same page without any kind of confirmation. And as a new user, I'm very anxious. I'm very unsure if this worked. If all my money was stolen and all that happened. So, so keep keep a steady pace and, and tell people that they do, did a good job and that you should continue, etc. Without these kind of surprises. Um, I want to make a post, but I, yeah, oh, I need to conform, confirm my email address. I don't know the UI, right? Or why do you even need my email address if I'm, uh, if I'm using this? But okay, just checking my email, click on the link, and oh wow, success, email verified. Oh, okay, good. Now I know I did something right. But all these weird icons, I have no clue. So, what's this red button do? 
Anybody know? Okay, I don't know either. So pretty, pretty weird and, and nothing really explained on their, on their site. But just clicking around, ah, at least I got an account, so something must have gone, gone right. Got a very big menu, but yeah, okay, something, something happened to me. Uh, click on my account, but yeah, that's rather empty. Zero, yeah, it's not, not good. So at this point, I need to set up my wallet to fund it so I can get rich. Because you need to spend money to, to earn money or something, right? So I click on that. Manage your balance across multiple devices with SendWallet. What is SendWallet? This is a new concept. I don't know what SendWallet is. Is this SendWallet or do I need to download SendWallet from the iOS app store or is it something else, right? So not a logical step to change this or to explain that to, uh, to me. Error. Please unlock your Web3 wallets. What the fuck? Which user knows what a Web3 wallet is? Well, probably you guys, but, but normal people don't, don't know this. So, okay, installing MetaMask, you guys, right? So we just install MetaMask. Ah, now we're back with MetaMask. You need to sign something. What am I signing? Is it my, my private key? Is this a transaction? Is this some kind of... I have no clue what I'm doing. I mean, it's, it's better than Japanese, but uh, <laughs> not better. Really? Um, so, give the user some, some heads of what they can expect. I mean, there's a lot of room here, so you can expect, ah, oh, now you get this signature request, and it's, it's harmless because it just needs to authenticate you with the unique nonce, but there's no private information in there, and blah, 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 blah. All this could be explained to, to make the onboarding much more convenient, and that's, that's still done. Uh, okay, I guess it works. They, now I say, oh, it's, it's recommended to add two addresses. But what kind of judgment is the user going to make for adding a new address? Are they just think we're going to create two MetaMask addresses? I mean, and is that better? Or does this need to be a, a secure treasure thing that you have in a vault in your grandmother's basement or something? They don't know what the expectation is, how this works, how you do recovering, etc. So, uh, very weird uh, how this works and what they, what they expect. So that can be done much better. And still, uh, pretty empty. I mean, you have no friends. Uh, okay. So, but I, I can deposit. So I can pay some money to, uh, to buy some... Uh, Green leaf thingies. Okay. Uh, okay. They can make a deposit. It's, it's kind of nice. They can have a dollar amount uh, entered instead of always changing exchange rate. I guess that's, that's pretty user friendly. So I, I, I like that. Uh, but yeah, I'm not going to deposit five dollars. I'm just going to do one dollar worth of uh, ether at the moment. Um, now they have a good warning. Please open your Web3 wallet to confirm deposit. Still don't know what Web3 is, but at least I'm, I'm warned that there's some kind of thing, some kind of activity. So they're, they're gradually introducing me to these uh, concepts. That can be better, but this is a pretty good step uh, already. Okay, did it work? I don't know. Balance is still zero. I mean, there is some kind of deposit made, but I would expect this number to go to go up uh, somehow. And you're not showing dollar amounts here again. I'm, I'm very confused. So go back to the website. And let's try to make some money to curate it. So I click on one of these posts, um, dive into it. Um, still don't know what this this, this amount is. Um, ah, now I understand. You're actually seeding, right? So now I understand why it was a green leaf because you're seeding some plants that make you money, etc. And uh, pretty good. There's some social proof. There have been all kinds of other crazy people before me that have done this. So it must be right and it must be getting rich already. So this is good reinforcement so for me to also engage with this step. But yeah, one dollar amount for this uh, for this article, I'm not going to do that. So just change it to, to 10 cents or, or so. Uh, so let's let's seed this with 10 cents. Okay? Uh, minimum dollar is. Why, if you give me input in dollars, don't you give me feedback in dollars as well? I mean, this is confusing. We do all kinds of math and exchange rates with, with fractional amounts, etc. So, and, and maybe show this minimum upfront already, or, or make that less of a surprise this uh, this time. So, okay, we can do this. We can give them a little bit more money. Uh, okay, we're going to sign something again. I mean, yeah. Fortunately, it's not 9.5 instead of 9.6, right? I mean, that would have been horrible. But uh, okay, okay, we'll sign something again. Would be good to already announce this, give people some feedback, some heads up what they can expect. Maybe if they click it away, that they 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 dig into their MetaMask history of what to uh, what to do. Uh, okay, that failed. I don't know why. Probably because I had the zero balance while even spade. Um, yeah. So back to Twitter. Screw you, Sam. 
again, big surprise, maybe a bug, but this is kind of typical of all the dApps that you're trying, right? So uh, now try to convince your your neighbor to use decentralized application. Okay, let's do one more. So, who here knows Uniswap? Wow, that's a lot. Okay, let's see how they do uh, something. <laughs> One morning. Um, okay, again on the say the Debs website on the exchanges, they're one of the you know, pretty popular exchanges with quite a bit of users and engagement, and it's, it's trending up. So, <coughs> must be good. Protocol for automated automated token exchange. That's a bit technical. I'm not sure if you want to have a protocol or something. It's it's true, but it's not really helping me out. <laughs> um, they're in position of the image. Looks very simple, right? Just an easy flow, ETH, die, swap, done. Then that's, that's, that's good. But on that listing, and, and this is also why the onboarding doesn't start on your own website. It, it starts how you communicate yourself to the outside world. The only listing features, they're not listing benefits. They, 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 I mean, and remember, your, your, your customer, they don't really care about your product. They, become, they, they care about becoming a better user, player, more popular, whatever. And only your product is helping them. So don't just focus on the features of your product. Focus on why they will become a better uniswapper using your, your product. Um, okay, let's do this. So, again, I visited the website. No matter must be installed. Uh, already pretty clear, right? So now Ethereum what is fun. But now you can do this. Um, don't really recognize these animals, but MetaMask, Chrome, Brave, <coughs> yeah, there's something, there's some actionable stuff to that. Pretty clear, easy step. And already, I'm stunned, right? So there's already like a preview of what you can expect. So there's, oh, this is the same kind of thing, and this is the same image that I recognize from here. So I'm at a good website. I mean, maybe they're still still my coins, but uh, at least it, it, looks, it looks good. So this, this kind of preview is, is really helpful uh, to, to get some trust in, in my, my own steps uh, confirming that. Um, so I go to MetaMask and really cool positive surprises that I see a screenshot of MetaMask in the Chrome store. So this is really good reinforcement that I'm doing the right stuff and it'll become very cool very soon. So, okay, let's add MetaMask, let's fund it, do KYC, uh, sell your mother, etc. Okay, so <laughs> we mentally come back a couple days later. We can visit our website now with MetaMask. Completely blank website. I mean, we've seen this before. Everybody's making the same. Mistake. Why don't I see this kind of nice preview that was there before? Why do I need to log into your website to just see what kind of tokens I can swap, what exchange rates are there, get some kind of help? Completely not required. Again, why I'm giving you these permissions? And I can kind of understand it, right? So if I want to show your token balance, I need to know what your account is. But if you explain that to somebody, they're less surprised and they're more willing to do this, even if it might not be required, but they're more willing to engage and give the right permissions for your application at the right moment. And again, if I just keep pressing cancel, at least I get a preview of the site, so it should be possible technically to do this. Why don't you do this in the, in the beginning? But I cannot get past this unless I connect it to their, to their website. Um, okay. So, pretty clear design. We've seen it before. There's some terminology, and what's a pool? I mean, yeah, I like, it's very hot in here, I like to go swimming, but I, I don't know what a pool is. But besides that, uh, it's fine. It's, there are no links to documentation, social proof, copyrights, terms of service, or whatever, right? It's very plain. And this is really weird. And they have a beautiful website, a companion website on another domain, with great links. I mean, they're even granted, uh, they receive a grant by the Ethereum Foundation, so it must be awesome. You can read documentation, they're really explaining your thing, you get to download the source code. This is really awesome. I mean, it's still about the features instead of the benefits, but this is really awesome. Why don't you link to this from your dev website? This is a completely disconnect between these two. Maybe there's some kind of legal concern about it, but I don't think you're going to trick any lawyer or judge that these are different entities. So you might just want these links and make this much more integrated. But really good job on this landing page, even though nobody didn't see it. Um, yeah. So let's swap some ether for DAI and. Um, that's a good lead to the next uh, talk after me. Um, so on this site, the primary focus here is select a token. I mean, besides that it's a beta user, that you'll use your dogs and, and kittens, etc. Selecting a token is the primary call to action. So that's good. But there, 
they are saying enter a value to continue. So there's a disconnect of what is the intention and what's the next step to take, which is confusing me as a as a um, Okay, I can do that. I just click on the token. It's a fairly easy selection. I don't know what CVC is, and this civic icon is really tiny, right? So maybe just show a name or some bit more information or exchange rate or something like that. I mean, could be more user friendly, but well, I can I can use this. Okay, I found die. Um, I guess I click on it. Okay, that's okay. That works. Um, yeah, that's not a good exchange rate. I'm not sure <laughs> what uh, kind of stable currency you guys are making. <laughs> this this, this <laughs> is horrible. Um, and again, put this emphasis on the next action at the right moment. Because if I actually were to follow these steps instead of just looking at what was the biggest highlight, if I were to first enter a value, then I were to see exchange rate because that's how they're pooling mechanism works and all kinds of uh, um, explanations for that. But ah, no, this is something that I can read it. Um, this is really cool. So you can do transaction details and it tell me what to expect. It will, you will either get this or it will fail. You will receive at least this or it will fail. So I know even if it goes wrong, I know what to expect and what the range is and that I'm not going to be getting screwed or not more screwed than these exchange rates. So, why don't you always show this? I mean, just, just removing this, I mean, you're not losing any screen. Say this is really good reinforcement, really valuable. Right? But just, just show it all time, or once you enter these values so you can show it. Just give this a little bit of comfort to your, to your users. Um, I click on swap, I get this MetaMask pop-up from the ETH to token swap input. Um, okay, also MetaMask has some improvements uh, to, to do, but that's another uh, talk of a couple days. Uh, but yeah, this notification, it could be primed. It could be could be some introduction text, oh you need to, you can expect this, you need to uh, confirm it, it has the exchange rate, you're paying this total amount but you might get a rebound, uh, rebate if it, the transaction is less, um, check your um, check your MetaMask extension for an action and something like that, and, and this is something that the XDAI uh, website is doing very good, where they show actually with a little arrow where you need to click on something if you miss this uh, popover. Um, Okay, click on this. Something happened. I mean, just this little one pending uh, screen. Uh, this is a big display zoomed in, but if I just use the normal resolution, I don't even see this one pending thing. So you can put way more emphasis on what's actually happening, what's the next step. Don't worry, your transaction being processed, just wait a bit, etc. So just make that much more obvious, because yeah, now you cannot do anything until you uh, have that transaction processed. Um, so take that anxiety away. Okay. I can click on it and I see. Oh, this was uh, OX uh, B9403, etc. Maybe I don't even know what it was anymore. Or I just want to get a little bit for it. And, oh, now we are swapping your 0.5 ETH for this many die. Um, how long will this take? Um, maybe we can get a, give a little estimation of that. You can click on it, you can go to the Ether Scan website, and they show you, ah, on average it will take um, 39 seconds. So why don't you show this kind of information in here to, to give a little of, bit of comfort to them. Um, of course, Peter, this was uh, lying, it took five minutes to get this transaction processed for some reason. Like maybe just again, example to, to blame. Uh, thought it was getting faster instead of slower, but uh, that's Ethereum life uh, for you. Um, okay, I guess it kind of worked. But only if I look very carefully, you see my balance was improved. But there's no success, congrats with your first exchange, now spend your die on other stuff, etc. So put much more emphasis on the success flow, that the result was there. Maybe you want to review your transaction, uh, maybe you want to forward it to your accountant, uh, what kind of thing. I mean, it's completely hidden. You can just see it by seeing this, this little number uh, increase. So to be honest, it was very simple, especially compared with the previous one, but still a lot of improvements to, uh, to be made here. All right, thank you very much. I'm also curious, maybe very short, to, to hear from you. Is this kind of walk too helpful for you or, or not? Do you sell that walkthrough as a service? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's, it's free, uh, no boarding required. No, I mean, but I can, do, I can do it for, uh, I want to do this for, maybe not for the 3,000 apps that we have, but maybe for the top 100 or something. I want to do this in a steady, uh, steady pace. And just, it also helps me, just like doing a survey for your 
for that developer, it helps me to see which are the big missing steps that everybody's going through with them. And how can we, from State of Depths, help you onboarding instead of every developer having to do this or not? So if you're interested in that, talk to me. This is my Twitter handle, or just go to the website and click on the live chat support. Your co-operators are standing by. Do you want the live chat support? No, we have it. <laughs> um, I just I was going to ask a different question, but what you just said was really interesting. Um, state of the DAPs could be the onboarding for things like MetaMask, for example, yeah. for all the DAPs. And very uh, interesting. So we actually got a lot of traffic coming from MetaMask and also from uh, Ethereum.org. I'm probably the only person in the world that hopes that Ethereum.org doesn't change their websites uh, because of all the traffic that mm -hmm. we get. But the same for MetaMask. And because we have a live chat, MetaMask doesn't have a live chat. So we get the live chat requests of people who are asking us how to deposit their tokens and, and if this is, how to do this kind of thing. So we are basically playing customer support for, for MetaMask. And this is something that we can really improve. But, sorry, continue. Uh, but question. my question was, you, you've been watching um, adoption on these dApps for about a year or more, if I'm not mistaken. Are you seeing, what kind of patterns are you seeing as far as adoption? Or is it growing, shrinking? Um, so, I'm doing this since 2015, um, so at least we have a lot of dApps, and at some point I cannot collect them anymore in my Google spreadsheet, uh, etc. So this is still soon. These kind of spikes, I mean, I showed it initially, it was really incredible to have, to have these kind of outcomes. Um, but it becomes much more, much less black and white, what is a dApp, what is not a dApp, when you use one chain, or maybe even multiple chains, I was talking with Igor from uh, Polar Network, like, Many dApps even use multiple chains at this moment for different benefits or different use cases, etc. So explaining this to users is really, really tricky. So it gets much more complex, much more confusing, much more diffuse. Um, so I kind of think this, this, this trend is continuing, uh, but yeah, I don't know where it, uh, where it goes. Yeah? yeah, do you have a roadmap for a state of the dApps? Do you have some uh, goals you want to achieve or, uh, yeah? Uh, yeah, so one of the things was I want to improve user onboarding, but I have no clue where to start. So this is my yeah. first thing to start and maybe from there improve this. Uh, another thing is I want to emphasis much more on other uh, objective transactions, trends happening. So maybe devs that have the ENS uh, naming, we can get some information on that, like how many uh, subdomains are registered for Aragon, for example, to show some trends there. Again, it's a matter of timing, because if we did this last year, nobody was using it. If we're doing it now, maybe three, four, five dApps. I think also Status is registering an ENS account for every user that signs up. So getting the timing right, incorporating with these users is very cool. Um, I want to connect with Wallet Connect and see if we can improve this wallet uh, flow as well and integrate it more in our, in our website. Uh, I still have to figure out what to do with Tron, if I'm going to add them or not. So these kind of ethical questions are also in the back of my mind. So a lot of, a lot of things out uh, there. But, and it can change in three months. It might be completely different. Everybody must be running password chains, and, and the world will be completely different. But for now, a couple of big steps uh, laid out. Yeah, because to my understanding, the state of the devs is more a, a website to data, data insights in the application. But you're currently uh, stating it as a user, like a kind of app store for that. It's, it has multiple purposes for different okay. users. And again, at some point you cannot collect everything on one user. We also have onboarding issues at the moment, right? Because yeah. if you click on launch dev, what's the difference between a visit the website, launch dev, and there's no install dev uh, in between, so getting that correct. But yeah, users are dev developers primarily. Uh, interested first-time movers, um, potential investors, uh, people doing due diligence and research and so different kind of angles. A uh, lot of, uh, of couple of journalists also looking into like the latest story, like oh why is this trending? What's happening? And uh, why is this spiking? And oh now we have like one month less traffic. Oh is everything dying out? So all kinds of users for this. Uh, this thing. I'm just curious, you just showed us that, that number one game is just crappy, at least, <laughs> and that even more popular sites like Uniswap is not perfect, at least. Is there any app you could, that you could, uh, you could provide as an example, some really good app? 
Uh, to be honest, I think Uniswap was like one of the best that I've seen so far. Yeah. Um, so in the beginning, I mentioned. Um, so I think Steam Monsters. I've been ignoring Steam for two, three years, but I think Steam Monsters is like one of the best on-chain uh, devs apps that are out there. So that's really interesting. I mean, it's, it's really a fun game instead of just a hidden Ponzi scheme. Uh, so that that's really interesting. Uh, Dirt Wars has some potential, um, but yeah, actually this kind of research or this kind of tear down kind of thing is, was inspired by Saban Ulick from Usual.com and he does the same thing for Gmail, Dropbox, Twitter, like all these web 2.0 applications and he does kind of, I've, I've been inspired by him to put that way. And even Dropbox and Gmail, they make these kind of mistakes themselves. So I think no, nobody is perfect, but you can learn a lot by seeing what works and what you can carry over from the web to the web uh, 3.0. I think time wise led to one final question. Um, you, you mentioned a lot in your teardown about things that don't make any sense. Do you think the word gap makes sense to users? And is that in and of itself something that's like... I would hate to change my domain name and logo, etc. <laughs> <laughs> I know uh, Evan from the Weekend Ethereum Manager. He said once I added EOS, he said, "Oh, shouldn't you rename your state of the apps?" And maybe that's that's true at some point. I think getting this this weird jargon out there it kind of makes you special in the beginning. It's, it makes a difference, and at some point it's just confusing. And everything will just be that because everything will be running on Ethereum, right? In 2000, obviously. But yeah, we are certainly not flawless of, of improving this kind of thing. And even just is it that the app? Job or whatever you think about it, it's <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.